All right, well, we're on to section 1.7, and, uh, and this, uh, uh, this section is all about determining the molecular shape. There's two components that we want to look at. One is the, is the length, and the other is the length of bonds, and the other is the angles that we have between bonds. So we'll start by looking at, uh, at bond length, we'll find that there are a couple of trends that we should pay attention to. One is bond length. Uh, we'll find that uh, if, if we're bonded to the same atom, in this case, we're bonded to hydrogen. We've got carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, that the size will decrease as we go to, the, to the right across the periodic table or increases as you go to the left. Uh, if we look over at the periodic table, so here, uh, will, it will increase as we go to the left. There's a reason uh, behind that uh, has to do with uh, has to do with the atomic size caused by uh, increased effective nuclear charge. Uh, but the most important thing here is that uh, it increases as we go to the left. We'll also find that bond length will increase as we go down in a column. So for example, if we look at the, hydro at the halogen acids, HF, HCl, HBr, that those bond lengths increase as we go down in the periodic table. Again, I'm gonna go back to our periodic table. So HF is the shortest bond, HCl is longer, HBr is longer. If we were to look, HI is even longer than that. Now, it doesn't just apply to bonds with hydrogen. It also applies to bonds with other things like carbon uh, um, and just anything. As long as you can do an apples to apples comparison, uh, you should be able to uh, determine the uh, um, which one will be longer. Now, you don't need to memorize these bond lengths. Um, that is not a good use of your brain power, but it is, uh, it is uh, worthwhile to memorize the trends. The other component of molecular shape that we want to look at is bond angles, and bond angles are going to be determined, uh, are going to be determined by the, the number of groups around the central atom. And groups are, uh, in, in my general chemistry one class, we call them electron domains. A group can either be a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond or a lone pair. But uh, a group or electron domain, I will use those interchangeably here. Um, it can be a particular, a, an atom or a lone pair of electrons. We use this with the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Uh, and according to the, the VSEPR theory, these atom, these domains, these groups, try to get as far away from each other as possible. And so we'll find that in organic chemistry, there are three that we are primarily inter interested in. There are a couple of more that we sometimes see in, in inorganic chemistry or organometallic chemistry or some other interesting chemistries. But uh, for organic chemistry, we're primarily interested in these three. If there are two groups, uh, we will get a linear electron domain geometry. Uh, and we will get an, an angle of 180 degrees. And I have here a model. Uh, this one is beryllium chloride. There are no lone pairs on the beryllium atom. Here are the chlor chlorine atoms. And we will find that those chlorine atoms get 180 degrees apart from each other. When, we're, uh, when we have three groups, uh, we'll have what's called a trigonal planar electron domain geometry. And that has an angle of 120 degrees. Uh, again, I've got a model here that demonstrates this. This one is boron trifluoride, but this will be true of anything that has three domains around it. You'll see here that we've got our boron in the middle, our three fluorines around the perimeter, and that we have three bonds going uh, uh, to that, and the angle in between any of those would come out to 120 degrees. 
the more interesting one is when we have four groups uh, around the central atom. And when we have four groups around a central atom, we get the tetrahedral geometry. And that tetrahedral geometry comes out to 109.5 degrees. It's approximately 109.5. It's actually like 109.4722 something. You don't have to memorize that. It's about 109.5. That's good enough for most of our measurements. Here I've got uh, methane. There's CH4. There's a carbon, and there's four groups around it. And you'll see that um, that it is in three dimensions. The angle comes out to 109.5. We're going to be looking at this model quite a bit uh, uh, throughout this chapter, and we'll see it in other chapters as well. All right. So whenever in the situation where we have two groups around a central atom, uh, we'll refer to that as linear, uh, linear 180 degree angle. So the, uh, the angle between the domains is going to be 180 degrees. Examples of this, uh, um, here is beryllium hydride. Uh, here's another one, carbon dioxide. Again, just as a reminder, those, those groups don't have to be single bonds. They can be double bonds. Uh, here in acetylene, we're going to talk about acetylene a little bit later, but uh, um, each of these carbons has two groups or two domains around it, uh, and they're all 180 degrees. As a consequence, we'll find uh, acetylene is a linear molecule. All four of those atoms are collinear. Uh, let's see. This one is acetonitrile, which is a uh, uh, which is a commonly used solvent in organic chemistry. And this carbon in the middle has two domains, so 180 degree bond angle between this single bond and this triple bond. And then finally, here, this one is nitrous oxide. And nitrous oxide, you'll see that uh, uh, this nitrogen in the middle has a triple bond and a single bond, so uh, two domains. Uh, therefore 180 degrees. So for linear, that's really pretty easy. All right, when there's three groups, still pretty easy. Uh, we're going to refer to that as the trigonal planar uh, uh, geometry. So the angle is going to be 120 degrees. Uh, it's possible that one of those domains could be a lone pair. We'll look at that a little bit later. Uh, some examples of this, here's BF3. I showed you an, a model of that a little bit earlier. Uh, here, is, uh, here is ethylene. So that double bond counts as a domain. Uh, here, the, this carbon, we've got a single bond, single bond, and a double bond. Angle is approximately 120 degrees. Turns out it's a little bit different than that, but we'll save that for later. Uh, here, this is formaldehyde in that carbon. Uh, there are three domains, so the angle or the uh, uh, geometry is trigonal planar. Again, angle comes out to approximately one, uh, 120 uh, degrees. We'll find here this nitrogen. One of the domains is a lone pair, but that doesn't really affect it very much. We'll find that it, uh, the angle between that lone pair and the single bond comes out to about 120 degrees. And then finally here, we've got benzene. You'll see that, that all six of these carbons have three domains around them, three, uh, uh, three places where there are, uh, uh, three places where there are three, or I'm sorry, three bonds around each carbon. So therefore, all of them are trigonal planar. Interestingly, interestingly with benzene, we'll find that all, uh, all 12 of those atoms are coplanar, so they are all in a single plane. All right. When there are four domains around the central atom, we'll find that we call that tetrahedral. With tetrahedral, uh, um, the angle comes out to approximately 109.5. As I mentioned earlier, it's not exactly 109.5. It's actually the arc cosine of negative one third, and that will give you the uh, angle. So if you happen to have a uh, calculator that has the trigonometric functions on there, do the inverse cosine of negative one third, and make sure you're, um, it's in, in degrees, 
uh, um, your your units are set in degrees and you'll get 109.471206. Anyway, um, it's an irrational number. It doesn't really matter. The point is about 109.5 is good enough. So the drawing, it's hard to make a regular drawing look like it is 109.5 in a two-dimensional page uh, because uh, it's difficult to represent three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. And so this is what the geometry of the of the CH4 looks like. And I mentioned this a little bit ago and I showed you uh, when I showed you this model, so uh, uh, so we can we can treat the there's there's some tricks we can do to draw something like this, uh, but um, we we need to remember it is a three dimensional shape. So far, the other objects were all in two dimensions. Uh, the linear and the uh, and the trigonal planar were all easy to draw on a piece of paper. This one is a little bit more difficult. So often, what you will find is that when we draw things out, and I did I did this with Lewis structures, uh, um, it looks like the angle should be should be ninety degrees, but that is not what the geometry is. The true geome geometry is one hundred nine point five, which again we call that tetrahedral. So what we want to do is we want to look at number sixty on the uh, uh, on the in class assignment. And looking at number 60, let's switch back over here. So looking at number 60, zoom in a little bit there. Okay, so on this, we want to predict the geometry. And when we predict the geometry, we're gonna go ahead and also write the angle that would be associated with that geometry. And to do this, we just need to count the domains. If there's two, it's linear. If there's three, it's trigonal planar. And if there are four, it is tetrahedral. If we look at this carbon, one, two, three, four, that one is tetrahedral. With tetrahedral, uh, 109.5 degrees. On this nitrogen here, now it may be a little bit difficult to see on that piece of paper, but you can see that there are two lone pairs. So we have one, two, three, four. So that means this one is also tetrahedral. And we'll say 109.5 degrees. All right, now for this carbon here. On that carbon, uh, let's see, there are two double bonds on either side. A double bond counts as one domain, so that's two domains. This one is going to be linear. And of course, that will give us 180 degrees. This boron, uh, easy enough to count. There are four domains with four domains. That is tetrahedral. And of course, that is 109.5 degrees. On this carbon, you'll see one, a single bond, a single bond, and a double bond. That double bond uh, counts as, a, as one domain, so one, two, three domains. That is going to be trigonal planar. And that will be 120 degrees. Uh, on this nitrogen, we've got one, two, three domains. That lone pair counts as a domain. And so that is also trigonal planar. 120 degrees. Now, right now we're doing this with Lewis structures. Uh, in a little bit, we uh, you will need to be able to do the same thing, but with, um, but you'll also want to be able to do this with uh, um, the skeletal structures, and I'll show you how those skeletal type structures work in just a bit. All right. Well, now that we have now that we have uh, looked at those, let's look at the next thing. All right. So our three drawing three D structures. When it comes to drawing three D structures, um, there's a trick we can do that are perspective drawings. Uh, we have solid lines. Uh, uh, wedges and dashed lines. The solid lines are going to be in the plane of either your piece of paper, if you're drawing it on paper, or the screen, if you're looking at it on a screen. 
uh, a wedge is going to be in front of the plane and a dashed line would be behind the plane. So for example, for uh, uh, methane, so uh, methane here, uh, we've got two lines that are in the plane of the screen. Or if, again, if you were going to do this on paper, they would be in the plane of the paper. So those uh, are the two lines. Uh, we have a wedge indicating that that one is it's bold. It's coming out towards you. It's in front. And that would be represented by this one that's coming out at you. And then a dashed line is the one that is behind you going away from you. So a solid, a wedge, and a dashed line. Uh, um, that's how we can do these kinds of drawings. When you're, and we're going to practice these later. Uh, uh, for now, I uh, just want to show you what they look like so that you're familiar with them. And, and when you see them again later coming up in chapters four and five, uh, they won't seem too weird. So um, these are all equivalent structures of these 3D structures of, uh, of methane. Uh, you can turn it in different ways, and the, these all mean the same thing. It's just that they're oriented in space a little bit differently. So uh, the structure that we saw a minute ago was this one. That's the perspective drawing. And again, uh, these two are in the plane. This wedge is coming out towards you. The dashed line is going away. If you were just to rotate this around, uh, uh, 109 degrees, so 109.5 degrees, so that this hydrogen was going up, this one just kind of rotated around, you would find that you would get this. So that, again, it's the same structure. Um, and it really doesn't matter which two hydrogens, you could take any two of these hydrogens and put them in these positions, and then the other two would line up like this. All right, um, here, if we've got, uh, um, here we've got, uh, uh, we, we've lined them up this way so that these two are in the plane. This wedge is coming out towards you and the dashed line is going away from you. And uh, this one is just upside down from this one. It's just a rotated 180 degrees. So those are all completely equivalent representations of methane. Now, uh, uh, the wedges and the dash wedges or the dash lines as they are, as they are some ca sometimes called, um, that those are, you know, even though we kind of tilt them a little bit, those are actually right one right in front of the other. And so sometimes you'll skew it, skew it one way and sometimes you'll skew, skew it the other way. And, uh, it, it's really just a preference. So this thing over here on the left where the wedge, uh, uh is skewed to the right, it's kind of like you've taken this this model and you've kind of moved your head over and you're just looking at it from a slightly different angle. And for the, uh, for the one on the right, for the one on the right, it's like the, it's like that wedge, uh, the wedge line, you're, you're kind of looking at it from the right side. And so let me show you what that looks like in terms of a molecular model. So here, we're going to say these two, these two bonds are in the plane. We've got our wedge that's coming out towards you. And you can see that the dotted line is this one that's in the back and it would be going away from you. But you'll notice that you can't see it when you line it up perfectly. So you could either uh, tilt it so that it looks, uh, uh, so you're kind of getting, looking at it from the side. And that is, uh, that is equivalent to this structure that is over here on the left, okay? And then if we come back over here and we tilt it the other way, now the wedge is going a little bit to the left, but all we've done is we've just changed the angle ever so slightly, and that is like the structure that is here uh, in the middle. So uh, keep in mind, these two are the same thing. It's just like you're, you're looking at them from slightly different angles. All right, we've already seen a couple where we've had uh, lone pairs that are groups. They count as domains. Uh, they push on the bonds kind of like the bonds push on each other. So, for example, ammonia has four domains and one lone pair. Um, we will notice, this is kind of interesting, 
Uh, we will notice with ammonia that uh, um, the angle does change a little bit. It's close to 109.5, but it does change a little bit. And then this is what the geometry looks like. So this is typically how we would draw it as a Lewis structure. And uh, note as a Lewis structure, the angles that are drawn are not the real angles. Um, and so here we've got the trigonal pyramidal. Uh, um, and I'll show you why over here, why we call it trigonal pyramidal. Um, this is kind of like a really short triangle shaped pyramid. Therefore, we call it trigonal pyramidal. The lone pair, uh, um, the lone pair doesn't have an atom at the end, and so um, we don't we don't really count that as as part of you know the shape of the molecule. The shape of the molecule is going to be dictated by the atoms. Now, I just so happen to have, well, happen to have, I purposely have it here, a uh, molecular model that is. Uh, that is ammonia. Typically, we represent nitrogen atoms in blue. And so here you'll see we've got the three, the three nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. And then I have this interesting looking knob here to indicate the lone pair of electrons. Well, the lone pair of electrons pushes on those bonds. It repels those bonds, just like the bonds repel each other. Uh, we will find that because that lone pair of electrons sits closer to the atom than the electrons in a bonding pair do, because it sits closer to the atom, it pushes a little bit harder on the bonds than the bonds push on each other. So that's why that angle uh, contracts a little bit and goes to 107 from 109.5. All right, again, trigonal pyramidal is the name of that one. All right, if we've got two lone pairs as groups, like we do in water, well, in water, uh, again, it's still a, a tetrahedral geometry, but uh, the angle contracts a little bit, again, because those lone pairs, all right, and so we, we call that geometry bent. We call that geometry bent. And here is what the water molecule looks like. Often you'll see people draw water molecules like this. But again, just keep in mind uh, that Lewis, draw, Lewis structures do not necessarily reflect the shape of the molecule. You can be fooled by Lewis structures. All right, here is a, a, another way to draw it. So it looks like it is bent. And then here is a uh, perspective of a ball and stick model. And I've got an actual uh, molecular model uh, this is one that that I uh, uh, that I printed on my home 3D printer, and you'll see here we've got the two bonds. Those angles are a little bit narrower than uh, um, 109.5. It's really more like 104.5. Uh, the book just rounds it to 105. And then here you'll see uh, the lone pairs. There's two lone pairs on there, so the shape of the molecule ends up being bent. All right, and then just to emphasize how these bond angles change a little bit with the lone pairs, because the lone pairs sit closer to the atom than the bonding pairs of electrons, those lone pairs push harder on the bonds than the bonds push on each other. So the angle for methane comes out to the idealized 109.5. For ammonia, it's down to 107. And for water, it's down to like 104.5, but here again, it rounds it to 105 degrees. All right. So summarizing this, we can predict the geometry with the number of domains. So we can predict the geometry with the number of domains. And we did that, uh, um, we did that with uh, um, some problems a little bit ago. All right, so the next thing that we want to look at is uh, looking at condensed structures. When we're doing condensed structures, the at all atoms are drawn in, including hydrogen atoms. Um, uh, and uh, usually, uh, let's see, and usually we leave the, uh, the, the bond, the two electron bonds 
are generally emitted. So if you've got a single bond between two carbons, you just write those two groups right next to each other. If you've got a hydrogen, it's just implied uh, uh, to be a single bond. And so um, you usually will put the atoms that are on the main chain in order, and then you put the atoms that are attached to each of those individual atoms directly adjacent uh, to them in the condensed structure. Really the easiest way to demonstrate this is just to show you an example. We can use parentheses uh, around uh, uh, similar groups bonded to the same atom and I will show you that. Uh, lone pairs are usually emitted. So here, here are a couple of examples. So here we've got the compound butane. So CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And so uh, again, because uh, uh, these are all assumed to be single bonds, you don't have to draw the, the assumed single bonds. So CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Since we have a repeating CH2 there, one trick that we can do is to put parentheses around one of those CH2s and then put a two there to indicate that there are two of the CH2s. So it's not much of an abbreviation for butane, but if you had 10 carbons in this chain, um, that would save you quite a bit of space. Now, the whole idea, the whole idea behind condensed structures, the whole reason that they exist is one, it's a shorthand way of communicating what the molecule is, and you can do it in a typewritten uh, uh, situation. So uh, when scientists were trying to communicate the molecules that they were discussing, uh, they wanted to do this in a way that they could do it uh, with typewritten or typeset, um, it, you know, with just normal kinds of fonts like super, superscript, subscripts, those kinds of things. And that's exactly what they did. So the trick, here is if you've got uh, multiple things that are attached that are all the same, then you can just say instead of having to draw this out in three or you know in two dimensions, uh, you can make it so that it's just CH3, three, that there's three of them that are attached to this CH. And that's a really convenient thing to do. All right. Here are a few other examples of con some condensed structures. And this is just to show you how we deal with things. So here we've got the CH3 that's right in the middle. All right. So here we've got a CH3, CH2, a CH, a CH2, and a CH3. But to deal with the CH3, uh, um, you can draw it as a second line. But again, the whole idea is to be able to put it into a typewritten page. And so to do that and not have to put your single bonds. So if you want to put it in the same line, you put it immediately after that hydrogen in parentheses. And so that when it's in parentheses, that means, ah, this CH3 is attached to the whatever your, your previous carbon is. You don't want to think that it's attached to the one on the right. It's attached to the one on the left. If you've got multiple bonds, double bonds or triple bonds, then you can, um, then you can put those uh, uh, in, again, typewritten, it would just be an equal sign. Uh, uh, for a triple bond, you would have to have the special character of the three, uh, the defined as sign. Um, if you've got heteroatoms, so heteroatoms are other than carbon, then you would uh, specify them just by putting the group. So here we've got an OH group, it just goes on the end here. Uh, since we have two CH3 groups that are attached to that first carbon, it'd be CH3, 2, CH, and then there's the CH2, OH. All right. Um, here we've got two chlorines attached to this first carbon, so you can put Cl2, C, uh, CH, so that's Cl2, CH. If your chlorine shows up in the middle of a chain, usually you would put it immediately afterwards in parentheses, and I can show you how to do that here in just a bit. Um, let's see, CH2, CH2, uh, and you notice we'll have CH2, 2 here. Oxygen, just put oxygen because it's part of the main chain. Carbon, and that's part of that main chain. And then finally, we've got uh, CH3, 3, indicating these three hydrogens. 
If you happen to have a carbonyl in your structure, then the way that we deal with that is um, it's going to be a little bit different for each uh, each functional group, but it's pretty straightforward. So um, here we 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 don't we don't typically have to write the the double bond. We don't have to put the double bond. Uh, it, we just make it so that the carbon and oxygen go immediately together. So again, it depends on which functional group you have, but if you've got a, an aldehyde, which is this functional group, we're going to talk about functional groups in, uh, in chapter three. So that is coming up. Uh, but here, uh, for the aldehyde, you would write CHO. That is just the generalized way that we like to write an aldehyde, CHO. The reason we don't write COH is because OH is often used as uh, the sign for alcohols, and we don't want to do that. All right, here we've got um, here we've got acetone. So uh, with this one, it's it's a ketone. So CH3 carbonyl CH3. So we would put CH3 CO CH3. And that is, uh, that is adequate for representing ketones. For carboxylic acids, often you will put the two oxygens together. So you'd have CH3, COOH, or CO2H. You'll see it written as COOH or CO2H. And for esters, you will typically write it as CH3, COO. CH3 or whatever that that R group is that whatever the functional group is there so you can put it as COO or CO2 and then the CH3 um, some of this just takes practice uh, um, but with practice you will get good at it so we're going to look at number 61 on the in-class assignment pull this up again when I was uh, when I printed this out for some reason, it didn't print out. Uh, uh, it didn't print out properly, and so I had to draw the structures in. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if you guys are having the same trouble. I, I again, I, I, I didn't have time to figure it out, so I just dealt with it. I drew the structures in. All right, so we want to uh, convert any Lewis structures into condensed structures, and then these condensed structures, we want to write them as Lewis structures. All right, so here we've got CH3, uh, uh, a CH, we have an OH that is attached. We have a CH with a CH3 attached, and then we have CH2, CH3. So the way that I would write this is I would put the CH3 first, and then CH, in parentheses, put this attached OH group. And that tells you that it's attached to this previous carbon. We'll have another CH. And then in parentheses, we will put a CH3. And then CH2, CH3. So CH3, CH, parentheses, OH. CH parentheses CH3, CH2, CH3. All right, for this next one, uh, we've got a CH3 attached to the CH, and then we have another CH3 that's attached to that CH. So we can combine these two and call it CH3, 2, CH. And that takes into account both of these CH3s. Now, if this had been one further over, we would have put it in parentheses and put it to the right. But because uh, we have two identical groups that are attached to this CH, then we can put simply CH3 to CH. Now we've got a CH with a chlorine, so we'll put CH parentheses chlorine and then CH2. And then this is a ketone, so we'll put COCH3. And that is our correct structure there. Next, uh, we want to convert these into Lewis structures. So here we've got CH3 
two C H. All right, that's very similar to what we had over here. In fact, that's that same thing. So I'm going to put C H. I need a little bit more room here. So C H three, C H, and then we have a C H three that is also attached. So that takes care of those. We have a C H two, C H two. So C H two. CH2, and then a CH, and then we've got CH3, 2, so that means we have a CH3, and then CH3. All right, and you'll notice that I drew those as uh, structures. Now, this is still a little bit cumbersome, and here in a little bit, we're going to do uh, we're going to do what we refer to as uh, as skeletal structures, and the way that we would deal with skeletal structures. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We'd have a CH three there and a CH three there, and so you can see that uh, we are moving, we're moving towards having something that is just uh, much more convenient uh, by doing these kinds of structures. But we're not quite ready to do that. We'll do that here in just a little bit. All right, here we've got a CH3 and then CH2, 2. Now, um, this CH2, 2 means that those are in the main chain. So they're within the chain that we're looking at. But you'll see this one, CH3, 2. Well, CH3s cannot be in the chain. They have to be on the edge. So those are going to be substituents hanging off of this carbon. So let's write down what we have so far. We've got CH3 and then a CH2 and another CH2. And then here we've got a carbon and there's two CH3. So a CH3 and a CH3. So that takes care of those. Now we've got a CH and it doesn't particularly matter which way we put the hydrogen, but we have a CH3 that's attached. All right, we've got another CH with a CH3 that's attached. I'm just gonna put it here. All right, we've got a CH and a bromine that's attached. And then finally, CH3 to represent the end. Now, again, this is going to be so much easier when we get to line structure. So I'm going to give you a sort of a peek ahead at what comes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let me make sure I've got the same number here. So eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 carbons and a bromine. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 carbons and a bromine. So, uh, one, so eight, 8 there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, carbon 4, We've got two methyl groups, carbon five, we've got a methyl group, carbon six, we have a methyl group, carbon seven, we've got a bromine, and then CH3. Again, um, we, we haven't done this yet, but uh, after we've done those uh, skeletal structures, I want you to come back and look at these, and you'll see just how easy they are.